Let's bring in Bill Selesky of Argus Research. He had a note out yesterday. Which that we discussed. We, we discussed. Yep. Bill, we discussed your note quite a bit yesterday. You came out. Okay, yeah, that's good. Target of 808. I think it was good. I mean, that's what you, you, you need to get some everyone thinking about these. What are you thinking today? You put 808 on there, street high. The stock just hit 945.48. What is going on with Tesla? Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I didn't think that would happen today. Um, I really have no idea what's causing it to pop today. I just know that yesterday uh, we did come out with uh, a new price target, so I think that had something to do with it as well. But, you know, there was also some information out there yesterday about Panasonic, you know, joint venture battery with Tesla. They actually said they made money in the fourth quarter of 19. That was a first. And uh, there was also the, uh, the Chinese manufacturer uh, re said they had signed a, a supplier agreement with Tesla. That was also a big positive. So I think yesterday we had a couple of, you know, points where you could point to. Today I'm not too sure, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty pricey right now. Well, and I, I guess, Bill, just broadly speaking, what is the challenge as an analyst following um, any company that's seeing uh, the price of its stock go up with such speed? I mean, certainly, you know, you guys were at 556 before this. It's not like um, you hadn't right. viewed there, uh, viewed a, uh, let's say, a rosy outcome for Tesla shares at some point in the future. But, you know, certainly your clients want some sense of where the stock might go. And if you're bullish on the name, it would make sense to try to keep that price target ahead of where the stock is trading right now. But as an analyst, how do you handle this kind of move? I mean, the stock's up $280 in the last two trading sessions. Yeah, it's pretty tricky. I think sometimes uh, there's some trading events going on or short sellers covering that, you know, might inadvertently push it up or make it higher. Um, so that's what we have to deal with. Uh, it looks like it's gotten ahead of itself right now. You know, but at the end of the day, we're trying to look out 12 months and figure out what's going on with the company. We see sales as continuing to climb. And, you know, we're seeing a growing trend now with consumers that uh, as far as electric vehicles go, uh, this is actually something that is continuing to strengthen. Uh, not lessen. And I think what you're seeing is more people uh, buying into the idea that electric vehicles are going to be part of our future. And, uh, you know, at the expense of internal combustion engines, those will slowly fade away. So I think you're seeing more and more people actually believing that electric vehicles are going to be part of our future. Hey, Bill, if a client calls you and says, I read a note yesterday, I bought it, but look at it today. What do I do? Do I stick with this or um, do I take some profits here? No, I think, well, if you bought it today or yesterday, I think you stick with it. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of volatility in the name. I mean, they still have to produce the cars, right? They still have to make delivery numbers. Uh, they still have to hit their financial targets in 2020, and they haven't done that yet. You know, time will tell, but if you bought the stock yesterday, today, I think you hold on to it. And uh, if you're a true believer, you know, if the stock gets beat up any particular time and gets hit, you know, 5, 10, 15 percent, you know, then you buy on weakness as well because you believe somewhere down the road things will get better. Bill Selesky of Argus Research, great uh, getting a chance to talk with you. Sure, no problem. Thanks. So hold on here. I guess that uh, that should work for all these Robin Hood investors, these retail sure. investors yeah, right. getting in. We've right. heard maybe there's 12,000 of them that were first time Tesla buyers yeah. above 700 here. Sure. Is the retail move a sign that this exuberance has jumped species a little think, bit or I, Again, no? this, this is very similar. Like you look at the action in the stock and it's very similar to what we saw at Beyond Meat, very similar to what we saw Tell in a Ray. bunch of the cannabis names a couple of years ago, very similar to what we've seen in the coins over the last couple of years. I mean, if you go through the last four years of this bull market, 2017 was the coins, 18 was weed, 19 was fake meat, maybe 20 is Tesla. Um, these events have been happening, um, you know, I'm, to some extent oil was this way, right? I mean, there was a, uh, anyway, right? We don't need to chronicle all the mini bubbles that have happened since the actual financial crisis, but this fits a pattern of what we've seen in the market. And so, um, look, I, I don't think anyone, and you can kind of hear it with Bill there, like he's bullish on the stock. He thinks the company is in a great fundamental place, but there's really nothing to say when the stock goes up $160 in one session. Well, yeah, and it's hard to justify that type of move, no matter how strong exactly. the fundamentals exactly. are. If you drill down into the stock, I mean, you can take the 
strongest story fundamentally. And if you see a movement like we've seen in Tesla, it's still hard to justify where the price is trading today. I think what Bill said was pretty interesting, just the fact that obviously we have more and more people buying into the idea that electric vehicles will be the future. They're more comfortable with Adam buying Jonas EVs. Right about Alan, yeah. Adam Jonas, Morgan Stanley recently wrote about this as well. So I think that that is definitely in fact true. I think it's hard to justify where Tesla stock is trading today. I don't think you can really use that, yeah. the fact that electric vehicles are getting more popular to justify this 100 plus percent jump that we have seen in such a short amount of time. So I think volatility obviously will still be uh, pretty likely to come to this stock. And I don't think we'll likely see this upward, this continued upward momentum that we have seen over the last several weeks, right. several months, I guess I should say, uh, for the rest of the year, because there's just too much uncertainty out yep. there when it comes to Tesla. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.